Like most artists before fame, Mokhtar lived a poor life in Paris. The outbreak of the First World War made life worse for the artist, and for the rest of the 1910s, Mokhtar had to do various menial jobs for a living while insisting on sculpting. The end of the First World War brought a turning point in Mokhtar's career. He was invited to succeed his teacher Guillaume Laplanche as artistic director of the Greven Wax Museum in Paris. During his tenure at the museum, Mokhtar sculpted statues of political leaders such as George Clemenceau and Woodrow Wilson, as well as celebrities such as ballerina Anna Pavlova and Egyptian singer M. Kulsum. While working in Paris, Mukhtar met with Saad Zaglul, the leader of Egypt's Nationalist Waffle Party and a pioneer of Egypt's independence movement. Former Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Egypt and Chairman of the National Assembly. It held a pivotal position in Egyptian politics at that time. This meeting strengthened Mokhtar's determination to support Egypt's independence and inspired his willingness to actively participate in political activities related to the independence of the motherland. Inspired by Egypt's revolutionary movement against the British occupation in 1919, Mokhtar decided to support and inspire the Egyptian people by creating a memorial landmark, thus a work called Nadat Misr was born. This is a statue that embodies all the dreams of Egypt and its people, telling the glorious past of the country and the prospect of the future. The small model of the Nadat Misr statue was acclaimed when it was exhibited at the Salon of French Artists in 1920 and subsequently won a gold medal at an exhibition at the Grand Palais in Paris. Saad Zaglul, the leader of the Waft Party, believes that this work is a symbol of Egypt's national rejuvenation. Wissa Wasif, a well-known politician with a Coptic Christian background, Egyptian legal pioneer and patron of the arts, also greatly appreciated it. Egyptian students in Paris were even more touched by its symbolic meaning. In order to present this great work to the Egyptian people, Egyptian students in France returned to Cairo and launched a fundraising campaign to commission, build and erect large-scale versions of the Nadat Misr statue. Since this form of raising funds from private individuals to build large-scale public statues was pretty new for Egyptian society at that time, the fundraising activities did not go well. It takes time for people to accept this form and understand the significance of public statues to their society. But the ever-changing domestic and international situation finally made the event usher in a turning point. In 1922, two major events happened in Egypt. The first was that after 40 years of occupation of Egypt, Britain was finally forced to recognize Egypt's political independence, but still controlled key departments such as the army and diplomacy. The Egyptian nationalist revolutionaries hoped to unite the forces of all groups in Egypt to further strive for the complete independence of Egypt. Although Muslims made up the majority of the population in Egyptian society. But Egypt also served as the homeland for a large population of Coptic Christians, Orthodox Christians, Catholics as well as Jewish and Armenian Christians. Nationalists need to unite and unify all religious forces in Egyptian society to fight for Egyptian independence. If pharaonic elements could bring people back to the glorious days of ancient Egypt when the nation was strong and different religions coexisted peaceful with each other and create a common sense of historical identity and cultural belonging, then it is obviously the best way to unite people. Therefore, the development of nationalist movements also promoted the application of elements of the pharaonic era of ancient Egypt in the production of modern Egyptian culture.